Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about something which is very common and something which will give you pause, both personally and in a group. And it's bad breath, otherwise known as halitosis. What is it? What causes it? And what are five or six things you can do to combat it and live a better life, both not just for yourself, but for everyone around you? Hey guys, Dr. Nene here. I practice as a cardiothoracic, vascular, and general surgeon, and I'm now a health tech innovator who wants to improve lifespans and lifestyles. So stay healthy, stay curious, and keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be talking about halitosis today in a complicated way that means bad breath. And the bottom line is that there are many things that can cause it, but what it amounts to is the fact that when you breathe out, you have uh, volatile sulfur compounds that are causing the bad breath. In a nutshell, it's bacteria that end up breaking down food products and food products that are stored in between your teeth and gaps and whatnot that lead to this uh, sulfur type smell and it isn't pretty. So the, the question is, what sorts of things do I think about with bad breath that could cause it? And what things can we do? And so let's take it in that order. The first thing is, if you have uh, food gathering in between um, cavities or in between uh, teeth and you're not brushing regularly, and what I mean by that is twice a day and flossing once a day, that food can get worked on by the bacteria that's always in your mouth. As an aside, I'm sure you know this, but the human mouth is probably the dirtiest place on the planet. And in fact, the human bite is worse than a dog bite in terms of giving you all types of pathogens. You can imagine if you had food left over, what would happen to that food? It breaks down and it creates volatile sulfur compounds. And so just brushing twice a day and flossing will actually help with some of that and also rinsing between meals so that even if you're not brushing all the time, um, rinsing will, will take care of that. The next thing is hydrate. Why hydrate? Because if you have adequate saliva, it actually washes away all of the loose debris and whatnot and cleans up the area. Um, there are different conditions like xerostomia where you can't produce enough saliva because your salivary glands don't work. And in those cases, you got to stay hydrated because for obvious reasons, you can't wash out all of those compounds. But it again comes to the fact that all that debris sits there and it pockets and um, basically causes that. One more thing to add with poor dentition and brushing and flossing, if you don't go to a dentist regularly, and get your plaque buildup, which then gets formed into tartar, that's when you get the ability to have pockets for the food to collect. So that's the third thing that can help, that go to a dentist regularly, once a year, and get your teeth cleaned, and get them looked at, and make sure you're not doing it. Now, in another episode, we talked about the, um, the connection between poor dentition and heart disease. And we'll leave the link in the, the uh, description below and also on the screen here. But the point is that it can help you both for your health as well as for your bad breath. Uh, the next thing is make the right food choices. Now look, if you're eating onions and garlic, their defense mechanism is to produce sulfur and volatile sulfur type of smells and they stay in your salivary ducts and also get absorbed and, and exuded through your different mucous membranes. So if you know you're going into a meeting or you're going into different circumstances and you want to stay popular and if you're the only one eating the garlic and the onions, you might think twice there. Because if everyone's eating it, guess what? The whole place is going to smell like one giant onion. But if you're the only one, you're not going to be very popular. So make good food choices. The second thing is if you skip eating high sugar compounds, which the bacteria love to kind of live on and break down and cause things, and which also, by the way, will lead to dental caries or cavities, then you have to uh, worry about uh, worse bad breath, but also about your dental uh, issues later. And remember, your teeth are only with you for one lifetime after your milk teeth. And 
in animals like we talked about in our other episode, when they lose their teeth, they don't survive. In humans, we can get dentures, but it's no fun. The next is don't smoke. I've said it before for various other reasons, but it's also for bad breath because the problem with smoking is it puts out two to 8,000 different compounds which can stain your teeth as well as lead to poor dentition or poor uh, oral care and it can also lead to other issues. In that same vein, if you drink and end up with reflux or even if you have reflux, you can end up with bad breath. And so smoking and drinking, if you've got a history of bad breath and all that and poor dentition, will make it worse and can cause it. And then lastly, if all of that is not the case, think about if you have bad breath, could you have an associated ear, nose and throat infection, meaning a sinus infection or a cold, or if you have reflux or something else attributing to that, it should be investigated and treated. So these are the six things I think about with bad breath. It's easily treatable. And believe me, it's annoying both on yourself because you're always trying to make sure that you're socially acceptable, but also in mixed company. And it's not quite the thing that you want. Thank you for joining us. As always, if you liked what we said, hit the like button, leave the comments in the box below and make sure you subscribe so that you'll see every new episode and hit the bell icon so that it'll alert you. And then finally share this with everyone because bad breath's no fun. And it's one of those things that's totally treatable and it makes for a better world altogether. Uh, thanks for joining us.